Jerry of the Circus. for Jerry of the Circus. All together, men. One, two, three. Whoop! Oh. Be quiet. Marie will be gone in a minute. I hope he doesn't notice I'm gone. But Spike, what you gonna do? I don't know. Not much I can do, I guess. How long since Bradley told Randall about me being an escaped convict? Just before I got over here. Okay, men. One, two, three. Whoop! Oh. Murray didn't notice you're not on the job, and they'll get the tent up all right without you. Yeah, I guess so. I don't suppose it matters much. Say, Randall must have called the police by now. I suppose the cops are on their way over already. You gonna try and get away? Well, what's the use? They got the goods on me. Even if I could get away, I, I don't know as I'd try. Well, why not? Mm, it's not worth it. All this business of being scared to death for fear someone will find out about you. Hiding out and, and always known as a stretch you've got to serve in the pen if they do catch up with you. You mean you'd rather go back and serve your sentence? Yeah, I think I would. At least when I come out, I, I can go about with a clear conscience. But, well, but what? Oh, nothing. I, I know what you're going to say. If I done wrong, how can I ever have a clear conscience, huh? Yeah, something like that. Well, I, I didn't do nothing I'm ashamed of. But that poster said you stole from the United States mails or something. Yeah, that's what they sent me up for. But I didn't do it. I was railroaded. You mean well, you... It's just like I said. I was framed. It was a put-up job. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Well, what happened? Why don't you tell them? Do you have to go back? Yeah, I guess I got to go back, all right. You see, I ain't got no proof. But that's awful, Spike. That's not fair. I know it's not fair. That's why I broke jail. I was on my way back to Hansburg to try and find out who'd done that job. Is that why you joined the circus? Well, partly. I was hungry, so I needed a job. And besides, I knew this outfit was going to play in Hansburg. Gee whiz. Besides, I was sick and tired of hanging out. I wanted to live decent. To be treated like a human being. Gee, Spike, I, I feel terrible. Oh, don't, Jerry. If it hadn't been Bradley, uh, it'd have been someone else. Well, I suppose so. I sure hate to hit leave here, though. Golly, everyone's treated me fine. Even all that kidding about the key. Yeah. I sure hate to have these circus folks think I'm a criminal. Say, Spike, is, isn't there some way I could help? Oh, no. If I couldn't work it out, I guess a kid couldn't do much. Gee, listen, Spike, I, I'm pretty lucky, really. I might stumble on something if you'd let me. And, and tell me what happened. I suppose I might as well. It don't matter much now whether I help Murray or not with that tent. Besides, I kind of like you to know that the, the straight of all this. Oh, well, what is it? Well, it all happened over four years ago. You mean you've been in prison more than four years? Yep. It's a long stretch, too. Golly. Well, I'll tell you about it from the beginning. I heard they needed a baggage man down at the station. So I went down there and got the job from a fellow named Steve Platt. That happened in Hannesburg, huh? Yeah. Well... Platt's a kind of a skinny, nervous little guy and always browbeating his workers. That's why the job was open. No one would work for him very long. Was he mean to you? No, I guess he was kind of afraid of me, seeing as I'm bigger than he is. But he sure got even with me later. Well, how do you mean? Well, one night after I'd been working for him for quite a while, he came to me and he said I'd have to work the night shift alone. He was ailing and he thought he'd better stay home that night. You worked all night, too, huh? Sure. Trains go through a station nights as well as daytimes. 
We used to take turns. Well, this night he told me to be sure and go over the listings that were coming in on the 1 o'clock so that they could go out on the 2.30 train. He said that information positively had to be mailed out on the 2.30. You mean 2.30 in the morning? Yeah. Well, that was quite a large order. Usually we mailed it out on the 6 o'clock. But after all, he was the boss, and well, now there was a mail train coming through at 2. Well, however, it just stopped up the line a bit so a westbound train could go past. I usually went out and joshed with a brakeman, and, but, but that night I didn't because, well, I was all fired busy with those accounts. I, I had to get ready for the 2.30 train. Did you get them done? I sure did. What's that got to do with the holdup? Well, it seems like that mail train was held up while it was waiting, right outside my station. Wasn't someone else around? Sure, because they held it up. Yeah, I know, but wasn't there someone who could prove you were inside the station all the time? Nobody. But couldn't this here Platt explain you were tied up in the station doing that work? He admitted I was doing the work. But still, I might have gotten out and done the job, too, if, if I'd have been quick enough. The worst of it was that the brakeman I usually talked to thought they saw me. Well, how do you mean? Well, you see, I had an old red sweater I used to wear outdoors, and, well, they both swore they saw a guy run down the line with a sweater on just like mine. Gosh. Yeah, that, that's not the half of it. The funny thing about that was that my red sweater disappeared that night, and I've never seen it since. Golly, then whoever held up that train had on your sweater. Sure. But I couldn't prove it. Jiminy Willikers, that was tough. Well, who could have taken it? I don't know. But I got a good idea. Who? I'm not telling. But when I get out of stir, I'm sure his life going to find out. Golly, if you knew who had that sweater, you'd know who the real robber was, huh? Yep. The sweater and those non-negotiable bonds. Well, what do you mean? Well, there were some bonds in with a mess of stuff that aren't negotiable for most a year yet. What do you mean, negotiable? Well, uh, they can't be cashed until that time. And it won't be awful safe to cash them even then. But will they try? Uh, you bet they will. $10,000 worth of bonds aren't going to be left lying around if there's any possible way of cashing in on them. Golly, I should say not. Well, what do they look like? I don't know. I didn't take them. Why? Well, you see, I was thinking that if I could snoop around uh, when we're in Hansburg, I might find something leastways I could try. Yeah? Well, you don't want to get mixed up with that kind of person that'd let an innocent man go to jail. Well, I'm not scared. Well, still, I suppose you're safe enough. Gilly man may have left that town a long time ago. Say, I... I don't hear Murray or the Stakers anymore. No, they finished this tent some time ago. They're over working on the menagerie top now. Gee, I, I was getting so interested, I, I didn't notice. Golly, Spike, as, as long as you're innocent, don't you think maybe you ought to try and get away? Get you into trouble for tipping me off? I should say not. As a matter of fact, we, we may as well come out from behind this wagon. I'm not trying to hide. See, here comes Mr. Bradley now with Yeah, the... those are the cops, all right. Well, so long, Jerry. You're a swell kid. Hope I see you again when I get out. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Spike. I'm going to do my best when we hit Hannesburg to try and find out something that'll help you. Oh, you're a grand kid, Jerry. But I think you'd better keep away from all this business. You're dealing with real criminals when you're dealing with men who rob Uncle Sam's mail. Gee, looks like they see us. Uh, the cops, yeah. Well, they needn't worry. I'm not going to get away. Hey, you. Your name's Spike? Yeah, I'm Spike, all right. But I hear you're looking for Max Peters. Wise guy, huh? Oh, uh, I'm not trying to be funny. Don't feel so much like joking. I don't imagine you do. Well, Mr. Bradley, this is the guy, all right. Hey, buddy, might as well come along with us easy like. We got you covered. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to try and escape. You did once before, and it won't be easy to do again. Well, I'm not interested in even trying. Gee, Mr. Bradley, this is awful. He isn't even guilty. Yeah, tell that to the judge. Hey, buddy, we'll snap these bracelets on just for safety. Honest, I... I'm glad this is all over with. Mr. Bradley, Spike told me the whole story. He was railroaded in the jail. He, he got out to try and catch the man who put him in. Someone else is guilty. Yeah, that's what they all say. Spike, before they take you away, I want you to know I feel pretty badly about this whole thing. No, not half so badly as I do. But I ain't blaming you, Mr. Bradley. If it hadn't have been you, it had been someone else. They'd have caught up with me sooner or later. You're right there, buddy. You can't keep away from the federal agents for long. Say, Spike... I just happen to think, if I find out anything, I, I got a lawyer friend that'll tell me what to do so I can help you. Oh, yeah. Well, that's swell, Jerry. Now, now don't go worrying your head about me. I'm going to be all right. You bet you are. Well, Mr. Medley, you'll be hearing from us pretty soon. What for? Well, there's a little matter of a nice reward coming up for whoever recognizes and turns in the convict. Golly, I, I forgot all about that. I don't want it. What do you mean you don't want it? I just don't want it, that's all. I turned this information in because it was my duty as a citizen, not for gain. Well, you haven't any objections to picking up a cool $500 as a kind of bonus, have you? I certainly have. 
I'm not putting a fellow creature behind bars in order to get some money for myself. Well, of all the dang foolishness I ever heard tell of. Say, if the rest of the people in this country were like you, we'd be in a pretty mess. Well, if you ask me, it'd be a pretty swell place to live in. Well, no one's asking you, buddy. Well, I'm going to talk anyhow. Listen, Mr. Bradley, I got you wrong. I thought a court would turn me, turn me in for the reward. Oh, my good man. I'd do what I think is right without being paid for it. Yeah. Well, I don't mind telling you, I feel a lot better about being turned in by you on account of that. But you might as well take the money. Someone will get it, and well, you probably need it as much as the next one. I never heard of anyone who'd refuse a reward. Oh, the whole thing is very distasteful to me. I'll tell you what I will do, though, Spike, if you insist. I'll give it to my son and his fiancée so they can get married. They haven't had enough money, and this would just about set them up in housekeeping. Say, that's swell. I kind of like to be thinking of that while I'm back there in stir. Come on, buddy. We can't stand around here all day. We've got a car over there waiting. All right, I'm ready. But before I go, I'll tell you one thing, Jerry. You've helped me more than you know. I used to wonder what kind of business I'd really like to be tied up with when I was back there in the pen. I couldn't think of anything I really wanted to do, and well, now I know. You mean be with the circus? Yeah. The minute I get out, I'm going to join up with the circus and spend the rest of my life under the big top. Come on there, Peters. Well, bye, folks. I'm really proud to have known you. Goodbye, Spike, and I'm so sorry. Bye, Spike. Bye. Golly, I feel terrible about, about Spike. I know, my boy. It is too bad, but justice must take its course. I know, but when he's not even guilty... We only have his word for that. Yeah, but I, I just know it's true. Golly, I came back here and told him about you knowing who he was. Jerry, you didn't. Yes, I did. He could have tried to get away, but he wouldn't. Said he learned his lesson or something and might as well go through with it. He could have escaped and didn't? Yeah. He said he wouldn't because I'd have gotten into a lot of trouble. You certainly would have, Jerry. So, you see, he must be innocent. Whether he is or not, he's a pretty fine man. It's a pity a man like that should do the sort of thing he did. Golly... Don't you believe him either? Jerry, you must remember the courts found him guilty. Yeah, but they can make mistakes, too. Yes, now and then. But every effort is made to get the truth. I, I just know he's innocent. And I'm telling you, Mr. Bradley, when we get to Hansburg, I I'm going to do the best detective work you ever heard of. <laughs> 